Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to knit a brioche cowl in shortcut brioche stitch. So let's get started. I'm using um, worsted weight yarn for this. This is actually 100% wool from Hobby Lobby. This is called I Love This Wool. And I've got three different colors here, and I'm kind of going for a gradation from dark to light. You can do whatever color combo you want but I'm using these three. I also have a US size 11 or eight millimeter circular knitting needle, and this is 32 inches long, including the length of the needle. You're measuring from the uh, needle tip to needle tip and not just the cable. I'm using my Knit Picks interchangeables for this because those are my favorite. And I have several skeins of my wool yarn in my colors that I'm going to use and we're going to start by casting on with the dark. Now gauge is not super critical for this project because it is a cowl. It doesn't have to fit precisely or anything. It's just, you know, it's just basically a big tube that goes over your head. So the gauges not have to be precise, but if you do want to um, swatch your gauge, the approximate gauge I'm using for this is 10 and a half stitches in the shortcut brioche stitch to four inches. And here I have my dark yarn, my worsted yarn, and I'm going to start by casting on. And what you want to use for this project is a stretchy cast on because a brioche stitch, shortcut brioche stitch as well, are both very stretchy, very, very stretchy. So you need a cast on that's going to accommodate the stretchiness of the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a long tail cast on, but I'm going to cast on pretty loosely, and I'm gonna cast on 64 stitches with my long tail cast on, and just making sure that it's very loose, and I'm not tightening my cast on stitches all the way because we want this to have a pretty good amount of stretch in it. So I'll show you what it looks like once I finish casting on. So I've cast on my 64 stitches. You're going to want to double check and count again just to make sure that you have the correct number. All right, so I have exactly 64 stitches cast on to my needle. And I'm just going to mention here if you want to make this larger or smaller, as long as you use an even number of stitches, the rest of the pattern will be the same. So now what we're going to do is join this into a circle, make it a cowl by, we're going to um, stretch the cast on all the way around until the other end of it gets onto the other needle tip, like so. And this size needle is the perfect length for this circumference of cowl, but if you want to make a different size cowl, then you would want to adjust um, your needle by using a longer or shorter circular needle to accommodate whatever size cowl you're going to make. And it doesn't look like it's very big around right now, but it is going to um, be much bigger around once you get to the brioche part because brioche is very, very, very stretchy. So now we're gonna start the knitting. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that your cast on is not twisted on your needle. You want to make sure that that cast on edge is running around the inside of this circle all the way around and has no twist in it. Now we're going to start round one. And as we, before we start knitting, we're going to slip a stitch marker onto our needle. This is just one I have handy. This is a split ring type. If you want to use a locking type, you can, but you're going to have to keep moving it up. So whichever kind you like the best, I like to slip mine at the end of every row. So we're going to start round one, which is knit one, purl one, all the way around. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, etc., etc all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish knitting round one. Just knit one, purl one, all the way around, and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm back around to my marker, and I'm going to slip the marker 
And now we're going to start with the brioche part. And again, you want to make sure that your, um, your knitting is not twisted. The cast on edge should be on the inside all the way around because with the, the first row, it can still manage to get twisted as you're knitting. So just make sure that it doesn't have any twist in it. Now we're going to start with the brioche part, which is going to be on rows two and three. So with row two, we're going to start with something called a knit one below. And if you've seen any of my other uh, shortcut brioche videos, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But a knit one below is a very simple stitch to work. Instead of knitting into the stitch on the needle, the next stitch on the needle, we're going to go below and knit into the knit stitch from the row below. So here's the stitch on the needle. I'm going to knit into the stitch below it, like so, and then drop the above stitch off, the top, off of the, the left needle. So now I'm going to purl one. So the repeat for the row two is knit one below, purl one. So I've knit one below, I've purled one, I'm going to knit one below so you can see that again. Here's this next stitch on my needle which was a knit stitch from row one. I'm going to, instead of knitting into the stitch on the needle, I'm going to go into the row below and knit into this stitch below it. And then pop that stitch off the needle at the top and purl one. So this is what I'm going to be doing all the way around for row two is knit one below, purl one, knit one below, purl one, knit one below, purl one, etc, 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 all the way around till we get back to our marker. And that is our second row. And one thing you will notice as you're knitting this is that it's going to seem like it's very loose and like we're using really big needles for worsted weight yarn, normally we, you would use this type of needle, this size of needle on a, a thicker yarn. But the reason we're doing this is because brioche stitch and also shortcut, shortcut brioche stitch is very, um, it has really deep ridges in it. And because of that, because it's also so squishy and thick and luxurious, it kind of has a tendency to stand up if you would make a cowl out of this stitch in a smaller gauge. So we're making this at a much looser gauge than what we would normally use for this yarn so that the cowl will be extremely pliable and, you know, drapey around the neck. So I'm going to finish up row two with my knit one below, purl one all the way around, and then I will show you what that looks like. Now we're getting back around to the stitch marker. So I've got my last knit one below, my last purl, and then we're going to slip the marker to the right hand needle to start the row, the next row, which is row three. And row three is the opposite of row two. So for row two, we knit one below and purl one. For row three, we're going to knit one and then purl one below. So on the even numbered rows, which is going to be two, four, six, and etc., we're going to be working stitches below, knit below into the knit stitches, and on the odd numbered rows, three, six, nine, and etc., we're going to be working purl one below into the purl stitches. So I'm going to do a regular knit stitch, and then we're going to purl one below. And this is very similar to a knit one below. We're going to bring the yarn to the front, just like with a regular purl stitch. But instead of inserting the needle into the actual stitch, we're going to go down here and insert it into the stitch from the row below and purl through that and then slip the stitch above it off of the needle. So I'm going to show you that again. I'm going to knit one and I'm going to purl one below. I'm going to bring the yarn to the front just like a regular purl stitch. But instead of inserting my needle into the stitch, I'm going to insert it into the stitch from the row below purl through that and slip the stitch above it off the needle. So knit one, purl one below, knit one, purl one below, all the way around until we get back to the marker again. And the more rows you knit of this, the more of the fabric you will be able to see and you'll be able to feel how squishy it is. And that's why we're using this stitch for a cowl because even though it is going to be more open. 
than it would be if we knit it at the normal gauge for this weight of yarn. It is still going to be very insulating because brioche is, um, it really holds heat well because of its big air pockets that are in between the columns of yarn. So I'm just going to keep knitting around, knit one, purl one below, knit one, purl one below until I get back to my marker, and then I will show you what that looks like. Alright, so I am just about back to the marker. I've got my last knit one, my last purl one below. I'm going to slip the marker and move on and just keep on knitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep repeating rows two and three. Those are the repeat rows for shortcut brioche in the round. I'm going to keep repeating rows two and three until I have a total of eight inches of this darker color. And I will show you what that looks like when I get there and then we're going to switch to the next color. All right, so I have knit my eight inches in this color. And before I go any further, I want to show you some of the characteristics of this fabric. Um, this is a really, really squishy, stretchy, um, very warm and insulating fabric in spite of the fact that this is worsted weight and we're doing worsted weight on giant needles. Um, it's still very insulating and very squishy, which is what brioche is loved for. And what I want to show you here is we have these deep ridges here, these deep um, columns of knits and pearls. And I want to show you how to tell the difference between whether you just finished row two or whether you just finished row three. Because let's say um, you have to stop, you lay it down, then you come pick it back up. How do you know, you know which row you're on? So let's look at this top row up here. Um, what you're looking for is when you knit below into a stitch or purl below into a stitch, you end up with an extra strand of yarn running across the back of that stitch. So instead of having one strand of yarn that's just the knitted loop, you have this extra strand of yarn running across the back. Now because this is a purl, this is the back um, facing me. It's basically uh, the back of what would be a knit stitch on the other side. But as you can see, if I pull on that strand that runs across the back, it looks like a regular purl stitch, but it has this extra strand of yarn running across the back of that stitch. Now, if we look at the knit stitches, the knit stitches don't have that on the back because we did not knit below into the knit stitches on the last row. So that tells me that the last row I worked was row three because I purled below into the stitches because I can see I have that extra strand of yarn on the back. Now, if I had just worked row two, then you would see that extra strand of yarn on the back of the knit stitches because we had just knit one in, you know, knit below into those knit stitches. So I've already slipped my marker and because I'm finished with this color now, I've got my total of eight inches of this dark brown. I'm going to go ahead and cut the yarn and because the brioche fabric is, um, it, it's basically structured where two rows equal the equivalent of one regular row of knitting because we've knit below into alternating between both uh, knits and purls. So two rows of brioche are basically the equivalent of one row of say stockinette. So when we switch to another color and continue in another color, um, there's really not much to worry about as far as having a jog in your stripe. You might have a very slight jog, but not enough to be really noticeable. So what I'm going to do, because I'm using um, wool, and it's 100% wool, not superwash, as long as you're using an animal fiber that's not superwash, then you can do this as well. If, if you're not, then you can just change colors the normal way. But I'm going to go ahead and spit splice my new color to the end of this old color. If you want to learn how to do that, you can go and watch my how to spit splice your yarn video. But I'm just going to spit splice my um, lighter brown to this darker brown to change colors. Alright, so there's my finished spit splice. As you can see, 
the color change is pretty gradual because it's blended together. And now I'm going to continue knitting with this lighter colored yarn, um, repeating rows two and three again and again and again for another eight inches. And then I'll show you what that looks like. So now I have knit my eight inches in this second color. And so I'm going to cut my yarn and splice in my ivory, which is my third color. And I'm gonna knit um, repeating rows two and three for another eight inches. All right, so I have done all the knitting for my cowl here. It's gonna look really long, but when you put it on, it's gonna really stretch this way and scrunch down and be really um, nice and chunky and bulky around the neck. So I've got eight inches of my dark, eight inches of my medium, and eight inches of my light, and now we're gonna bind off. So I'm going to start by removing the stitch marker and um, because this fabric is so super, super stretchy, we need a super stretchy bind off to go with it. So we're gonna work a stretchy bind off here. If you have a different one that you would rather use, then go for it. Um, this is the one I'm gonna use. We're gonna um, bind off in pattern. So the, the stitches that are um, knit stitches facing us, we're going to knit those and we're going to purl the stitches that we are, that appear as purl columns. So I'm going to knit into my first stitch, purl into my second stitch, because that first stitch was a knit and the second stitch is a purl, and I'm gonna bind off that first stitch normally, like you normally would. Now we're gonna yarn over, knit into the next stitch, and I'm gonna take the yarn over and the stitch before it and pass both of those over the stitch we just knit into, like so. Now we're gonna yarn over and purl into the next stitch because that's a purl column. Take the yarn over and the other stitch in before it, pass it over the stitch we just purled. So that is the first little bit of our bind off. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna yarn over, knit into the next uh, knit stitch, pass the yarn over and the previous stitch over the stitch we just knit. Yarn over, purl into the purl stitch pass the yarn over and the previous stitch over the stitch we just purled. So I'm gonna keep doing this all the way around, very loosely by the way, because um, we are using um, chunky needles with a worsted weight yarn, really chunky needles with a worsted weight yarn. And so um, it might be kind of easy to put too much tension on the yarn or pull on it too much, make it too tight because you've got, um, you know, it appears to be really loose, but it needs to be because it needs that extra stretch. So I'm gonna keep binding off in this manner all the way around, and I will show you what it looks like when I get back around to the beginning, and I'll show you how to finish it off. So I have made it all the way around. I've only got one stitch left on the needle, and now I'm going to cut my yarn making sure to leave um, a 10 to 12 inch tail, just to make sure you have enough. And we're going to thread that tail through a yarn needle. Now normally when you would um, tie off the last stitch, if you were working on a straight, um, a straight piece back and forth, you would just take the uh, end of this yarn and pull it through the loop on your needle and tighten it. But then you have this gap here in the cast on if you're doing it in the round. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. So instead of just tying this off, we're going to um, do a little bit of a, uh, a trick to close this up without leaving a gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull on this yarn. I'm actually gonna take it out of the yarn needle for the moment. Pull on it till the tail comes out. Then I'm gonna put it into the yarn needle I don't need the knitting needle anymore. So I'm gonna take this tail and I'm going to find the uh, beginning right here, this first stitch that lays down. I'm going to put my needle into it, through it going underneath both legs of that stitch that's laying down. I'm gonna take my needle back down through um, this first top strand of yarn and the one underneath it, the horizontal ones. So that recreates the edge at the top. So now we've recreated the uh, stitch laying down across that edge so that it's totally seamless looking around the edge. Now I'm going to um, lift up this top little 
strand of yarn that was the last knit stitch in the knit column. I'm going to go in it from front to back, like so. And now I'm going to tie off and weave in ends. So I'm going to tie it off on the back and weave in this tail. And then my cowl will be finished. And there's the, um, the finished seamless looking bind off with lots of stretch. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.